What's good, YouTube? Crown Jewel from Crown Jewel Boxing. Back with a gem. Excuse me, I'm moving around a little bit. I'm starting my day. But as y'all can see, um, I rep my squad. Um, I think we're in trouble, I'm going to be honest. So I think um, right now the Knicks are the better team with Joel Hobble. But um, I'm still holding out hope for Maxie to go out and have another superhuman performance because um, the guys are his truthers. From we know that that's what's going to take for us to get a dub. So, uh, so for life, it is what it is. But now we got that out there. The real reason why I'm here, um, y'all know I'm pretty much, you know, exclusively a boxing, a content creator, and uh, biggest topic in boxing, um, or one of the two biggest topics is, uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia still, unfortunately, for bad reasons. And that's because um, we had an unexpected twist, a turn in the saga, where it was reported by several credible sources last night that uh, King Rye, Ryan Garcia, failed not one, but two um, drug tests um, the day before the fight and the day of the fight. And um, I had some comments on it last night. I've had some time to sleep on it. And, uh, you know, I want to express my thoughts now a little more in depth. Um, and I, I will just, you know, I ain't going to leave you on suspense. When it comes to whether or not he's taking them, um, of course, you know, he still has the benefit of having the B samples tested to see if they match the, you know, the A samples. So, you know, he has one last small lifeline there. But um, I'm going to double down. I'm going to say um, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm a retired firefighter. Some of y'all probably don't know that, but that's an old saying in fire services, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And um, there was a lot of smoke. Ryan was acting erratically. Um, we know, I, I kind of said I thought he was on some type of drugs. I didn't think performance enhancing drugs, but if y'all remember back before the fight, I compared him to Charlie Sheen and the way he was looking. Um the crazy ways he was acting he was kind of like i said erratic he was acting he had very erratic behavior um a lot of what he was doing wasn't making sense um we kind of we kind of see this could be a reason for that now number one number two i don't think the average person that watches boxing um follows how deep things get in boxing and how you know the intricate little details when you're at the top level um how, how scientific they are about things and um a lot has been made about him coming in the exactly same amount of weight over in this fight that he was for his last fight for Oscar Duarte. And um, I think that lends itself, again, to the possibility of him knowingly cheating. And here's how I'll say why. Um, a lot of people don't know. You know, most people know that boxers, you know, dehydrate themselves to make weight and then, you know, put the water back, you know, less than 24 hours, rehydrate and fight. Most people know that. Most people don't know the lengths fighters go to to put that water back at this point. And um, a lot of times they go get IVs and things like that or, you know, vitamin, along with IVs, you know, you know, not just liquid. Sometimes they get vitamin uh, drips and medicine in them and, and all kinds of things. But the reason why I point to science is, and the weight being exactly the same, these guys making a lot of money have, have the ability to hire doctors that have done specific research on how these drugs affect the human body, um, how long they're detectable in the human body, what has to happen for them to become non-detectable in the human body. And um, like I said, which is why it really only happens at the upper level because it takes a a lot of money to be able to navigate all these things, let alone the, the testing itself is so expensive. So um, a lot of people talk about, you know, and, and it's been rumored for fighters in the past where they would get IVs before the fight and people would be wondering why they would get so much fluids before the fight. A lot of times it's to uh, <laughs> dilute their body fluids so that whatever they may have been taking during the uh, training for the fight, allegedly, can be uh, diluted and undetectable in their bloodstream. And um, like I said, it's, it's, it's pretty ironic for Ryan to come in 
the same weight over two fights in a row. Um, and to me, it lends itself to his team realizing that they, they got the result they wanted in Oscar Duarte and beating the drug test. You know, we just have to put the exact amount of fluids that we put last time into them this time um, and follow the same steps and <laughs> we'll be able to hide it. But unfortunately, you know, we know what happens. You know, sometimes it doesn't work, which is why we've had so many fighters caught in the past. Um, and, you know, there, there's been, like I said, when there's smoke, there's fire. You know, guys like Manny Pacquiao refuse that Olympic style trust into years, I think, for this type of reason. But um, there are several indicators that, that Ryan, you know, was doing some things he had no business doing. And like I said, the three pounds means a, a big difference now because people, you know, wonder why he wouldn't refuse, why he refused to even try to lose any of the weight. Um, and why he was willing to give up $1.5 million in order to keep the weight. Well, if you thought that this water weight that you were carrying was going to help you avoid testing positive, um, then, you know, you wouldn't want to lose it because, you know, not having that water in your body will have much tougher consequences, i.e. you're not getting credit if you actually win the fight. The fines he, he deal with is probably going to be way more than $1.5 million dollars. More than likely, he's going to be suspended. That's going to cost him a lot more than one more one point five million dollars, as I'm sure he would have, you know, much more lucrative opportunities on the table coming off of a win. So, um, he just stood a lot to lose. And in hindsight, that one point five he spent to keep the weight on, if it had gave him the ability to remain undetectable, would be one point five well spent. Even if you feel like you know that kept him from completely dehydrated and damaging himself. I don't really get into that or understand that because, again, I know the lengths these guys can go to to rehydrate themselves um, that people who don't have that type of financial uh, affluence or, you know, uh, financial privilege to be able to afford themselves that type of opportunity. So, you know, like I said, these guys have nutritionists, they have doctors on their staff, they have all kinds of things. And it allows them to be able to operate safely and healthily within the guidelines, but it also, unfortunately, allows them to know the system well enough or have people around them that know the system well enough to be able to cheat. And I think that's what happens here, happened here. But somehow, you know, there was a misstep, and that, that kind of usually happens. Like when people do things wrong, you know, eventually they're going to get something wrong and it's going to be found out. You may not be found out right away. But eventually you'll be found out. So um, what I'll say is, you know, I, I'm sorry to Devin Haney. Did he make a lot of mistakes in that fight? Yes. Would it have made a difference? I don't know. But the fact that this guy came up dirty, it has to be changed to a no contest. And whatever happened in this fight has to be thrown to, to, uh, to the wayside. We have to kind of forget about it and move on. I hope for Devin's sake, the amount of punishment he accepted in that fight or absorbed in that fight, will not preclude him from being an outstanding fighter in the, in the future, especially when the guy that doled the punishment may have been helped with performance-enhancing drugs and may not have got his win honestly and and, and um without cheating. So, you know what I mean? I really, really, really feel bad for Devin in this situation. Um, If he's a smart man, he would take this time off, and I would still go back and try to address some of the shortcomings that were exposed there because steroids are not, you shouldn't be getting hitting clean, hitting that cleanly by a left hook when you train for a left hook going in. Um, he should not be able to be found that often. And um, it's obvious he has some defensive flaws that he has to address, you know, steroids or not. But with that being said, um, whatever stain is on him from this loss has to be lifted. And there's an even bigger stain on the reputation of Ryan Garcia who is, I hate to say it, yet another Golden Boy fighter who's popped dirty for steroids. I mean, we got Canelo, um, Oscar Valdez, and now Ryan Garcia, and that's just fighters in recent years. So, I mean, I was just congratulating Golden Boy for, you know, a big win by Ryan. They got, they're involved in a big fight with Canelo coming up this weekend. And with that Ryan upset and upset this weekend, they may have been the top promoter in boxing again. But Ryan's victory and the fame he just achieved and the the business prowess that uh golden boy may have just gained has all been flushed down the toilet with ryan being caught cheating and i'm um, like i said i i champion for fighters 
regardless of whether I like a fighter or not, um, one of my, my stable mates, um, IBF, former IBF lightweight champion Levander Johnson, again, lost his, his life in the sport of boxing. So I understand how serious it is. And anybody willing to cheat and put the uh, to, to, to gain an advantage and further give them the opportunity to be able to permanently damage their opponent, I can't respect. So, Ryan, you were goofy. You know what I mean? I thought you were goofy before the fight. I wanted to give you credit for the fight because of how you performed, although I still didn't agree with the antics and other, the other, other things that went along with what you did. But um, now nah, you're just straight goofy again. I can't, get, can't even give you credit for the way you performed in a fight because, again, you popped dirty. So um, with that being said, boxing has got to do better. We got to find a way um, to stop this. And I think the way to stop it is much different punishment. Unfortunately, you know, like I said, the guys that usually get caught doing this are guys that have a whole lot of money. So um, sitting them down a year, giving them a financial fine doesn't really hurt them because they make it all back when they come back. Anyway, I just think we need much different penalties. And in my opinion, anybody that pops dirty and doesn't have a justifiable reason should have a lifetime ban effective immediately. And in this situation, I think that's the case. Unless they can come up with some type of evidence to where there was a mistake made on his part or somebody in his part, you know, on his team, and it's justifiable and actually makes sense. If that doesn't happen, ban this young man for a lifetime. Make a statement. This will not be ter- tolerated. You will not risk the lives or put further danger um, the lives of your opponents in order to achieve success or financial gain. This is one uh, one sport or you know activity where that cannot be tolerated, should not be tolerated, and I hope when it comes to the powers of being boxing, will not be uh, tolerated. That's all I have for y'all right now. Until next time, keep your hands up, your chin down, your ass off the floor. Peace.